What's up, dogs? Theo here, and congratulations! You are finally about to be done with the basic tutorial. This means that you guys are finally ready to go out there, venture on your own, and learn the developing world of RPG Maker for horror games, or even just RPG Maker in general. Although you might need an additional set of tutorials that you won't find on this channel. Because after all, my specialty is for horror games. So with that said, and for today's video, we're going to be looking at some additional things in RPG Maker that you want to be mindful of before you actually publish your game. So, let's... Let's just do it. <laughs> Before I do jump into it though, I do want to introduce you guys to the game I'm currently working on. It's called Caster's Trap. It's a puzzle horror game that takes place in an abandoned cabin with a supposed secret history of magic. I'm currently creating developer vlogs, so please do check those out. It'd mean a lot to me. Thank you. So let's check out some event commands. We have so many different pages of event commands. And you're probably imagining, we only covered like four or maybe five commands. How can we possibly be done with the basic tutorial? Well, if we actually go ahead and click on some that you guys will probably use in the future, such as show picture, well, it's very, very self-explanatory. We got a picture ID that ranges from one all the way up to... 100. If you type in the largest amount of number and then head up, you're going to see what you're limited with. And the same is true if you hit zero and press down. You will know your limits. And of course, with this, I think it's pretty self-explanatory that you got your image, position, origin being either up or left or center, direct designation, your X and Y. Remember how things work from the top left to the bottom right? The only thing here to note is that this uses pixels. So when you enter your number, this is not tiles, it is pixels. And the best way to understand how many pixels that you are limited with RPG Maker is inside your database, going down to System 2. And here you are, your screen width and your screen height. And then pretty much looking at everything else, scale, blend, and designation with variables, we all know that variables can hold numbers. And of course, we can also use variables to position our picture. So really, everything from here on out is very self-explanatory. And of course, you do have the ability to highlight your mouse over different options to learn more about the events. I think the only thing that's worth mentioning is how loops work. Loop, as it sounds, is that everything inside the contents will be repeated from loop down to repeat above until you use break loop. So very, very, very often you will have a conditional branch. And your break loop will be within your conditional branch, like so. The last thing to mention about loops is that you can only break it within the same event page. So if you were to create a new one and try to break it over here, like doing something like this. This will not work. Even though you're saying loop, control cell switch A, turn on and it goes to the next page. Well, it won't actually switch onto this next page until this loop gets broken. And lastly, you want to be very, very careful about using loops and auto runs and parallel processes. And honestly, I would not use loops inside these two until you get a better understanding of how these two work. For cutscenes, you'll actually be using tab 2 screen very often. So get to know these parameters. One thing you'll really want to get good at is learning frames per second. Show balloon icons are also very useful. This is actually a new feature in RPG Maker MZ. Before, you would actually have to play it in order to gain a sample of it. And then with page 3 and scene controls, you get to forcibly open menu screens, save screens, game over, or return to tile screens. 
For more intermediate users, you'll probably be using this map section somewhat often. Going back to page one, we're going to take a quick look at actors such as change HP. So if we want an event to decrease their HP, we can kill them this way. Assuming your game has an HP for your character. But in most puzzle horror games, usually we just force the game over instead. That's over in page three. Another thing I want to point out are common events. Now this is somewhat of an intermediate step. It really is honestly basic, but I'd call it somewhat intermediate based on how we can use it. So we will hold it off until next tutorial. But if you're very interested, if we go back to the database, down to common events, you'll see them all here. And it looks exactly like an event page for event commands. So this is especially good if we have an event that repeats across many different ones. And that's pretty much it for events. Now I want to show you something special. Having started the game, if I hit escape, I'll actually look into my menu and look at all these things that we do not need. And especially, why do we care that our player is a swordsman? And for most puzzle horror game, our character should not have a level, HP, MP, or TP. Really, this is all additional information that we should not be seeing at all. So I'm going to just close this out, go back to my database, head on over to System 2. And if we go up here to Menu Commands, we can actually eliminate Skills, Status, Formation, and Equip. Then for Item Categories, we could get rid of Weapons and Armor. So that we're left with items and key items. However, if your game only has one type of item, then you can actually get rid of one or the other as well. And then saving is also questionable if you want to allow the player to save from their options. However, in most games today, there's either an auto save feature or the player will save in front of a certain event or like a table, a book, a gem, etc., etc., a typewriter. <laughs> and to be honest, if your game involves death a lot or multiple endings, then I would really, really highly suggest that you use a checkpoint system where they save at said typewriters and check this off. Ta-da! And now we just have this information that we need to get rid of for the actor. An actor, you're actually gonna see where that class comes from and level is pretty self-explanatory. And then HP, well, HP is actually locked into your classes. So one thing you could do is that if you want to actually show HP, you can edit it through the values here. Of course, the player will always be on level one, so you could just actually set this down to 100 and change the name of the class over here. This is still really, really awkward because we're having information that we do not want to see. And unfortunately, this is as far as we can go in the database. If you actually check out all your other systems, there's really nothing we can really do. We could get rid of the TP, but that's about it. So how can we get rid of all of those? Well, if you're trying to stay simple and stay inside the database for RPG Maker, then I guess you could just change the names of them, give it something else, and try to hide it in that way. Unfortunately, the only other way is to actually dive into the code itself. And if you're feeling brave enough, then continue to follow along. Hit game, open folder, go to JS, and inside, Windows. Of course, you will need a program that can actually read JavaScript. I have a free program called Atom, and it's actually highly used. You can download Atom in a link down below. Now, inside Windows, once you're ready, you will want to what's called commenting out. And to comment something out, you just hit forward slash two times. The code we'll want is 1746. And of course, this will change depending on the version of RPG Maker that you are using. But the important thing here is to actually identify the piece of code itself. So as I scroll down to 1746, you're going to see all this code that looks very, very intimidating. But trust me, when it gets broken down, 
it will actually make a lot of sense. And the more that you do RPG Maker, the more that reading the screen in front of us becomes a whole lot more easier. So here we are at 1746. We're going to see something called this dot place gauge parentheses actor comma HP comma X comma Y. Obviously X and Y is your coordinates and actor is a type of class and HP is exactly what we're looking for. So we'll just want to comment this out and as you look below it 1747 that's the one for MP comment that out. And you don't have to comment out TP because TP was inside the database. But we'll want class and level as well. That one's not much further. It's actually at 1808 and 1810. So if we go at 1808, this dot draw actor level. Well, we don't want it to draw the actor level. And we also don't want it to draw the actor class. And of course, if you do want to get rid of the name and the actor items, you can get rid of those as well. If you want to keep HP, then of course, do not comment that out at 1746 above. Or alternatively, if you want to get rid of all your gauges, you could just comment this out instead of 1746 or 1747. I just decided to dissect that in case you wanted to leave one or the other visible. And ta-da! Everything's gone. Now all we have is the player icon and the player name. You also notice that we have the gold window down here, so we'll probably want to get rid of that as well. Gold's a little bit tricky, and it could come in two flavors. We could get rid of what's written inside the box, or the box altogether. I'll first show you what's written inside the box. For what's written inside the box, you want to head down over to 1652. Hit that forward slash two times to comment it out. Control S to save. And now it's gone. But if you want the whole entire box, you could actually get rid of this comment. But now you'll be required to go into scenes. And you want to head over to 1257. Where it says this dot create gold window. And make sure you're in scene menu because this dot create gold window actually appears in several locations, such as going to a shop. Control S to save. Now it's gone. So there you have it. We did get a bit advanced towards the end for eliminating all the things unnecessary for the menu screen. But if you decide to dive right in with me, then it means that you got something going for you. You might actually make it all the way and start learning JavaScript on your own. And if you didn't, then don't feel bad. We are in the basic tutorial after all. We're just opening this for the first time and learning about RPG Maker. So just when you get more comfortable and you want to remove those sort of things from your item screen, then go ahead and do it. Now, I will tell you that there are plugins that does exist on the internet in the advanced tutorials and potentially in the intermediate tutorials. We'll actually be using some plugins where we can actually enhance the visuals or just the overall engine for an RPG horror game. So there you have it. Last thing to mention is that I am creating a horror game myself. You can actually follow the devlogs right there. Begging to myself that it's actually appearing right there and not there instead. <laughs> or follow the Instagram for a much shorter format. Thank you so much for watching and have fun. Till the next one. Later!